Over the last few days, we've seen Jeff Wittick go from protecting David Dobrik and still continuing a friendship with him to completely turning on him. Everyone was wondering what made Jeff go from protecting David to publicly bashing him and unfollowing him. David's gonna be trending on Twitter tonight. Who gives a f No, he's not. His yep. clout's over. He's done. It's washed up. It just seemed like such a sudden change of heart, and people knew it had to be something really serious. Jeff has finally revealed what David did to make him completely change his opinion on David and wake him up to just how toxic he really is. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Back in June of 2020, restrictions for COVID were lifted, and David Dobrik was planning his big return to YouTube. When the pandemic hit, David decided to take a break from vlogging because he knew he would be getting tons of backlash. Any influencers who broke COVID guidelines and went out in large groups of people were dragged online. David's vlogs would get boring and repetitive pretty quickly if he had to film them all inside of his house, so he just put everything on hold. David decided his comeback video needed to be huge. This is a really big problem with the type of content the vlog squad does. They always need to go bigger than their last video and try and top the stunts that they pull and end up putting people in really serious danger. Back when Trisha and Jason were breaking up, she predicted that something really bad was going to happen to that group. David Dobrik is, and I know this video is going to give me so much hate because everyone's up his butt, but they're going to realize and something bad is going to happen in that group. I don't know what it is. Something bad, something dangerous, something like... Like, they do all these dangerous things, someone's gonna either die or, like... And that's exactly what ended up happening. David drove an excavator into a lake and decided to let his friends swing off of it into the water. In the middle of the lake, we have this tractor, and then we have Heath and Todd. You guys ready? Ready. 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 <laughs> yeah, let's go. When it was Jeff's turn, David took him way too high, way too fast, and Jeff's eye was history. Now, Jeff didn't actually lose his eye, but he came very close to it. He's had nine surgeries to try and get things back to normal, but still suffers with the side effects from his brain injury. During Jeff's series about what happened to his eye, he sat down with David and confronted him one-on-one. -on -one. David called the whole thing a really bad accident and Jeff forgave him. The problem with David calling this an accident is that it's not really an accident. David took heavy machinery that he had no proper training on into a public lake, most likely without any kind of permit, and then swung all of his friends off of it. He had to know that he was putting his friends in a great deal of danger for content. David was even warned before Jeff got on. He tried to take Corinna way too high and the rope started to slip from her foot. She actually got mad at David and told him that he always takes these things way too far. Even though Jeff forgave David, people could tell there was a lot of resentment there. David got to move on with his life and do these big things and get amazing opportunities, while Jeff had to put his life on hold and take care of his health. Even after all the scandals that David had last year, he still managed to land a show with Discovery Plus called Discovering David Dobrik. He got to travel all around the world to these amazing places with his friends and be paid for it. Meanwhile, Jeff is stuck at home having to suffer through nine surgeries, all because of David. Jeff revealed during a live stream the other day that David never texted him after his ninth and most dangerous surgery. There was a good chance that Jeff would have lost his vision and David didn't even ask him how it was. Jeff finally woke up and unfollowed David off of social media and aired out his true feelings during his live. Everyone wants to know what made Jeff have such a drastic change of heart. But I'm done being fake friends with that mother. Well, Jeff posted a video to his Jeff FM YouTube channel titled Dear David. The video actually starts off at a different location than their normal podcast setup. Jeff was prepared to talk about the David situation, but then he cuts back to their normal setup. Jeff said he did a whole episode talking about David, but he got way too heated and he was also on painkillers from his surgery, so he just had to scrap it and try it again. Jeff starts off by saying that he's been protecting David for way too long. He didn't expect the live that he did over on Patreon to get leaked because he only has about 100 subscribers over there and he didn't expect it to blow up the way it did. Jeff does admit it felt really good to get everything off of his chest and say how he really feels. It felt good to get that out there. It felt good to hit that unfollow button. You know, I woke up from surgery and a day goes by, no text from him. Another day goes by, no text. Jeff says he's really mad that he sugarcoated the documentary he released last year. There was so much more that he could have said, but he was trying his best to protect David. 
He really thought David was a true friend, and even after everything that happened, he still thought David had good in him and was planning on changing. Jeff said it takes a while to finally see people's true colors. At first, it seemed like Jeff was mad because David never texted him just to check up on him after his surgery and be like, hey, how did everything go? Are you okay? But Jeff says it's so much more than that. The real reason Jeff was so mad was because David actually filmed his own documentary and completely blamed Jeff for the accident. Jeff says the producer of the documentary reached out to him and showed him a clip of David addressing the excavator accident and David blamed it on Jeff being crazy. And he said that it was my fault. David blamed me for the, the crazy. He insinuated that I was crazy. I always want to push it. And I'm the reason that this happened. When that's complete. There's 20 people on the beach that are witnesses. I have six terabytes of footage of you asking me, begging me to go out there and do the thing again. And that you would spin it slow. You just want to take me out there because it's more scenic. Jeff said he was in shock. Here he is giving David a break, didn't sue him, didn't press charges, yet David has the audacity to put the blame on Jeff? If Jeff had to press charges, David could have been deported. He saved David's life, even though David ruined his. Jeff feels like since the documentary he did is over now and has been up for nearly a year, David feels like he no longer has to cover his ass. Jeff even let David review the series before it went live and let him take out whatever he wanted to save his image. The most shocking thing is, David apparently came over after Jeff had surgery, walked right by Jeff and jumped straight into editing and removing things from the documentary. Didn't ask him how he was, just right into editing bits out. Jeff was also upset because apparently he got a phone call from Kourtney Kardashian and David shoved the phone in Jeff's face and was like, look, he did something stupid. Jeff didn't want to kick off and start fighting with David in front of Courtney, so he just had to sit there and take it. But I told him after when we were alone, I said, look, that call, that's not how this is going to go. I'll take this on the chin. I'll eat this. I'll believe it was an accident and I'll try my best to forgive. But if you go around saying that this was not your fault and you try to put it on the other guy, who's me, and say that this was my fault, these life-altering injuries, then there's gonna be problems. That's, That's where the switch flips. Peach. Jeff said another thing that really sucks about this whole situation is the possibility of him losing friends. He said he loves all his friends from that group and he's hoping they're smart enough to realize what's right in the situation and who's wrong. But he did seem the most worried about his friendship with Jason Nash. Jeff and Jason are really close. They're always together, Jason's always on his podcast, but Jason is also close with David. As I'm sure you guys remember, once David realized that Trisha Paytas was a threat to their image, he banned Jason from seeing her. Trisha said they had to see each other in secret because David wouldn't allow the relationship. It seems like that might be happening now with Jeff. David is Jason's main source of income and he needs David for a job. Jeff said he doesn't know what will happen with Jason, and he called the situation tough. My dear friend Jason Nash, who now I don't know what will happen with him because I know, I, I, I just, it's tough because I love the guy. And There's already signs that David might be trying to control Jeff through Jason. Jeff was supposed to participate in the roast of Bryce Hall, which is being put on by Jason Nash, but Jeff has since pulled out. He said he worked really hard on writing his jokes, but they tried to cut 50% of them and called them too edgy. He said some of the jokes related back to David, so maybe that's why they ended up cutting them. Jeff announced he wasn't doing the roast on Twitter, writing, I'm no longer a part of the roast of Bryce Hall. My entire set will be cut due to censorship and David Dobrik being involved. I refuse to be a part of anything that bag is involved in from here on out. I chose to have my set cut. They tried to remove half my jokes. This was supposed to be a comedy show. I didn't say anything I wouldn't have said in my own YouTube videos or podcast. This is all because that coward was there and he can't take jokes. The next reason why Jeff is done with David is honestly shocking. David said he was going to cover all of Jeff's medical bills and take care of everything. David is a multimillionaire, so honestly, that's nothing compared to what could have happened to him. But Jeff says David has been slacking on paying them. Since David missed paying some of the bills and they're in Jeff's name, he now has a negative rating on his credit score. They were supposed to cover the hospital bills. They slacked because whatever they were doing, making stupid vlogs, they didn't pay attention to something that's, I, I would think it's pretty important here because the 
the bills go to my name, and our agreement was just cover the hospital bills. I don't care about anything else. I don't. I'm not coming after him for money I lost from not being able to work or anything like that. But I got a, a bill that wasn't paid, and they didn't pay a bill. I got an infraction on my credit now. I go to get a house, and I can't get a loan because now I have another. Inf so it's just like things are piling up over and over again, and just try a little bit. Overall, Jeff just really regrets the way he let David have control over his own documentary. He said, looking back now, he wishes he was more honest in it and wasn't still protecting someone. Jeff has been receiving tons of support in his comments, and a lot of people want him to still pursue legal action against David. They feel like David manipulated Jeff into not handling things legally, and everyone thinks it's not too late to sue. David has gone completely silent on social media, and his comments are starting to fill up about Jeff. Here's what people had to say. How does it feel to cause your friend to almost lose his life and still go through life-threatening surgeries? You're traveling while Jeff is having surgeries for his eye. Such a shame. What about Jeff? Do you check on him? Do you call or text? You're the reason why he's dealing with all the surgeries. So far, David hasn't addressed anything, and given his track record, I don't think he will. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below, and I'll see you next time.